Let me ask you a question. Has your Minecraft world ever been plagued by hideous zombies lurking in the shadows? Or skeletons camouflaged against stone walls? Or even endermen whose glowing eyes can look right through your own soul? Or maybe, just maybe, the infamous Creeper. Together, we can stop this, introducing the brand new mob switch. Using revolutionary mob cap technology, we can prevent all these monsters from spawning in the first place. So, mob caps. Basically, what it is, is that there's a limit on how many mobs can be in the world at once, and once the mob, mob cap is reached, no new mobs will spawn. And there's a specific mob cap only for hostile mobs. In theory, when you put 70 mobs in one space, in the area no other mobs will spawn. And that's, that's the basic concept of a mob switch, that you'll just rid the entire area of mob spawn. The problem with this very basic design is that once you go away far enough so the zombies are not loaded, they will disappear. And now they do not count the mob cap anymore and new monsters can spawn. And even if you go back now, the zombies will have despawned. Now, I am sure that you are aware that if you name a zombie or give him an item, it won't despawn. But the problem is, it also will stop counting to the mob cap. So, what we are searching for is a mob which counts to the hostile mob cap, but does not despawn. And to aid us in our search, I've installed a mod which allows me to press tab and we can see all the mob caps. There's a bunch of numbers there, but the only important one is the very first one. That's the hostile mob cap. You can see it says 0 out of 70. When I press, uh, when, I play, uh, when I place a zombie here, you can see that it says 1 out of 70. And when we kill the zombie, it should go back to 0. Our first contestant is the Ender Dragon. Because the Ender Dragon is a hostile mob. And does not despawn. And he counts for a total of 9 mobs, and that's because he's made out of a bunch of parts. But 9 is not enough. We need 70. And we cannot exactly get more than one dragon at once. And we can also not get him to the overworld, which is kind of the place that we need him in. Now, this next contestant would be the Wither, and that's more like it. The Wither is definitely possible to make a mob switch out of, and some have been built, uh, because Wither skirt Skirts, as well as Soul Sand, are farmable resources, and let me kill him real quick before he destroys my entire map. But the problem with the Wither is, I do not have enough resources to make a mob switch around it, and it requires a lot of time to collect those. So the option that most of us are left with is the Shulker, which is by far the easiest one, because you just have to transport 70 Shulkers from the end dimension to the overworld. It is difficult, but far easier than the other ones. So, for a long time I thought that I, if I wanted a mob switch, I would have to spend a couple hours transporting shulkers from the end to the overworld. But it turns out there's another way. It turns out that if you take a villager and give him a job and then trade with him and turn him into a zombie, this guy now counts to the mob cap but cannot despawn. And this is very good, because getting villagers en masse is way easier than any of the other options. 
So, good thing that I've collected a bunch of villagers, and I actually did that on stream. So, be sure to check them out. They come every once in a while. Now I just have to trade with all of them and turn them into zombies, which uh, is easier said than done, but I've done a bunch of off-camera redstone which should allow me to do that. So basically if we wrap a bunch of villagers in this glass box and press this button, a minecart should pop up and the villager should come to us and turn into a Fletcher. Now let's see what his traits are. Okay, he wants arrows. So we can spend one emerald on arrows and then send him on his way where he should go in front of the zombie with the iron sword who should then promptly kill him. Please. Okay, and as you can see I have a chat I got a chat message and the zombie villager is now created. And if we press the button again now he should have gone in there. But there seems to be a problem. Uh, but in the end, he's down there and that's all that matters. And we need to separate them into three different cells. Because uh, entity cramming and we need 70 zombie villagers total and entity cramming is like 25. So we need three cells. I just have to figure out why this didn't work. Okay, I think I fixed it, just had to take the blocks a little lower. And now if we press this button, another villager should be picked up. Should get the job. Should get the job. Why is nothing working today? I'm not sure what he... Ah, there we go, he got the job. And he wants sticks, so we can make a bunch of sticks, because sticks are very cheap to make. Then we can trade with him, get ourselves an animal and send him off his way, where a new villager will be picked up, this guy will be turned into a zombie, and by the time this guy picks a job, we can send them both into the next stage. And you can see this minecart, it continues to travel, and then it goes into a cactus, right here. So minecarts are being recycled, I don't need like 20,000 minecarts. And if we just press the button once more. We should have a total of three zombie villagers right here. And now we just need to do that 70 times. So, I ended up doing all of that on a live stream, and it was a lot of fun, but I ended up running into a problem. The villagers would keep spawning iron golems, and I was afraid that they might kill my zombies. So I kept killing the iron golems, uh, evading death very narrowly a couple times, but then this happened. Oh uh, no. I guess the villagers... Oh no! Oh, he picked up the eye! Oh god, no! Oh! Oh no, you don't realize... Oh, you don't realize what can... Oh no, that's a big problem. As you can see, I panicked a little bit, because a zombie villager that has been traded with does count to the mob cap. But as soon as it picks up an item, it stops. Uh, but I calm down pretty quickly because I realized that I have three cells, which means I could fit a total of 72 villagers, 24 per cell, before entity cramming would start. And now I just needed to put one more villager in the third cell and everything would be fine. But then that happened. 
Uh, take damage. I said this like five times. They do. It was enough. He dropped rotten flesh and one guy picked up. Still fine though. Now I had perfect number of villagers in. But I think you can guess what happened next. <gasps> he picked it up! Sorry, sorry for people using headphones. But he took the rock! At that point, I ended the stream and decided that I would continue with the project the next day. And I did finish it the next day. But not without a lot of frustrating things happening first. I'm gonna spare you the details, but here's a little sneak peek. I finally finished. This took way too long. I probably spent like another three hours today just building on this. So many things ran, went wrong, uh, but I finished it. And I ended up adding a fourth chamber because uh, there was too, too many villagers that picked up items. You can see some of them have dirt, some of them have planks, some of them had buckets. <laughs> and just by looking, like, look at my frames drop. Uh, that's, if I press tab, you can see it says 71 out of 70. And this 71, that's all these villages. I'm not sure what 71, I think I pop one too many. But, now you might be asking, why I built this here, in the middle of nowhere, and not somewhere close to my base. And if I press... Uh, button to show my coordinates, you might realize that we're quite close to spawn. And to be precise, we are exactly at the chunk border, and not just any chunk border, at the spawn chunk border. If you didn't know, in the spawn chunks, uh, everything is loaded permanently, no matter if you leave the area or not. But just outside of the spawn chunks, things stop being loaded once you leave the area. And now, when I press this lever, this moves all the villagers from outside the spawn chunks back in again. Now it's in the spawn chunks. And now, even if I turn my render distance way down and I just fly away, if I look at the mob cap, it will still be 71 and these villagers are still loaded. Even better, it's the very edge of the spawn chunks, so they are loaded, but they are not really processing, so it won't lag at all. And the good thing is, if I want mobs to spawn again, I can just press the lever. Uh, where they will unload and mobs can now spawn once again. And I want to turn this off, I'll have it turn, <laughs> turn off probably a lot of the time, because I mean I have mob farms, creeper farms, which wouldn't work if mob spawning is basically disabled. So, let's demonstrate this. So, it's the middle of the night and we're in an empty field and there's no mobs anywhere. Ignore that Enderman. But there's almost no mobs anywhere. I don't know why that spawned. I think it just spawned earlier, but it didn't despawn. But if you've ever been in such a field at night, you know that there was creepers and zombies and skeletons all over the place. And I'm not cheating. It's at heart. No mob spawning. Everything is disabled. Even down in the caves, no more creepers will ever bother me again. I'm back at my base, and if we look at the mock cap, we can see that it's pretty high, but that's, I think, the case because all well, the mobs haven't despawned yet, so if we just fly, fly up into the air, we should see that number getting smaller until it reaches 72 because I also have a zombie villager down in my villager trading hall from the beginning of the video. And now nothing should spawn. And I can finally, 
finally remove all of these ugly torches. I hate torches. Like, you have to spam them all over the place just to keep mobs from spawning. But now, now that mobs don't spawn, no need for torches. Especially at the lighthouse, like... Come on, man, seriously, what kind of lighthouse needs torches? I came back to the contraption, because we can't leave it like this. I'll have to build something around it. Nothing special, just a little hut. You know, it's kinda ironic. This project took me many frustrating and unforgiving hours, and in the end, it's just a little hut on a hill. Then I thought, this hut may be small. But it tells a story, the story of a flourishing village that suddenly went to ruins, with most of its people being wiped out and the only light left shining being the fire that blazes through the buildings. But you know, the old village might have been more dangerous, because when it turned night, the monsters would creep out. Look at the iron golems, who used to be on permanent duty. Now they can finally relax. The remaining population can rebuild this once glorious village and then they'll tell their grandchildren about a time before the little hut on the hill. A time when monsters were lurking in the shadows. A time which is now only remembered through stories.